Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon to Dati Nur Faridah binti A. Bakar, Timbalan Pengarah Sektor Pembelaj- Pembelajaran Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Selangor, Ketua Penolong Pengarah Bahasa Sektor Pembelajaran Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Selangor, Puan Hajah Hanisah binti Muhammad Yusof, Puan Zahirah binti Zulkifli, Penolong Pengarah Bahasa, Puan Norlina On binti Abdul Wah, SIRC Plus, Bahasa, Daerah Petaling Perdana, Language Officers from all districts of Selangor and other states. We have an officer from Tuaran, teachers all over Malaysia, our panel of presenters and all attendees. Welcome to our webinar session, Engaging Year One Teachers and Parents with Home-Based Learning. I'm Nur Fazila binti Osman from SK Puchung Perdana, and I will be your moderator. Thank you everyone for making the time to join us today. Ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is a collaboration between Petaling Perdana District and Selangor State Education Department. So, before we begin, allow me to first share with all of you the objectives of this webinar. The objectives are to introduce some strategies to reach out to the students and parents during CMCO. Secondly, to introduce strategies to teach recognition of alphabets, phonics, and simple words. And lastly, to assist parents in teaching their children at home. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, inilah yang kita perlukan. Perkongsian strategi-strategi dan pendekatan yang digunakan oleh guru-guru dalam memastikan PDPR dijalankan di dalam tempoh PKP ini dan ini juga akan menjadi perkongsian mengenai strategi-strategi yang digunakan oleh guru-guru tahap satu dan juga ibu bapa untuk mengajar murid-murid abjad, phonics dan perkataan-perkataan yang mudah. Dan diharapkan juga sesi perkongsian ini dapat memberi panduan dan, ban- dan membantu para ibu bapa dalam proses PDPR anak-anak di rumah. So before we start, let me lay out a few housekeeping matters. First, teachers and parents, you can type in the chat box to introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from, which school you're teaching. And for parents, you can tell us your child's school and the year they're in. Secondly, the attendance will be shared approximately 15 minutes before the end of the session. So teachers, you can fill up the, uh, the form and for parents, you can fill up the Google form. Do look out for that, alright? So semasa sesi berlangsung, penonton boleh mengajukan soalan dan memberikan komen pada ruangan chat box. Soalan pada ruangan chat akan dipilih secara rawak dan akan dijawab oleh pembentang di akhir sesi mereka. So I hope you will stay tuned till the end of the session because we have a lot to benefit from these three amazing presenters. Tanpa melingahkan masa, saya ingin menjemput Puan Norlina On Binti Abdullah, SISC Plus, Bahasa, Pejabat Pendidikan Petaling Perdana untuk memberikan ucapan. Dipersilakan. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to our beloved um, uh, Timbalan Pengarah. Sektor Pembelajaran daripada Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Selangor, Datin Nofarida A. Bakar um, yang berusaha our Puan Hajar Hanisa binti Muhammad Yusof, KPPK Bahasa, JPN, Cik Zahira Zulkifli, Penolong Pengarah Bahasa, JPN, kepada semua guru-guru, kepada semua guru, ibu bapa yang atas tadian. Saya Nurina Un binti Abdullah, SIC Plus um, PPD Petaling Perdana Sya'alam. Terima kasih saya ucapkan kepada semua yang menghadiri sesi set webinar ini. Tujuan webinar ini diadakan dan di, dijanakan adalah atas keperluan masyarakat sekarang kerana anak-anak tahun satu tahun ini 
mungkin ketinggalan dari segi pendidikan semasa tahun 2020 dalam PKP, kerana ada PKP. Jadi kami di pihak PPD Bertaring Perdana bersama-sama dengan JU-JU saya dan pegawai JPN Selangor merancang program ini, webinar ini agar dapat membantu ibu bapa dan guru-guru untuk bersama-sama dengan anak-anak kita di rumah untuk menguasai asas pembelajaran iaitu mengenali huruf dan membaca. Jadi teachers and parents It's a truly an honor for us to be able to come up with this webinar to assist all of you in the process of a PDPR or home-based learning. We certainly um, hope to bridge the relationship between parents and teachers as well as up, um, upgrade our skills in order to break, make learning um, meaningful, fun and effective for our little ones at home. So I won't talk too much because we are we're going to listen to our speakers and we're going to be feel free to ask questions feel free to chat with us and um, let us make this two hour session beneficial for all of us thank you very much assalamu alaikum Terima kasih, Puan Narlina. Seterusnya, saya ingin menjemput Dati Nur Faridah binti A. Bakar, Timbalan Pengarah Sektor Pembelajaran Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Selangor untuk memberikan ucapan beliau. Dipersilakan. That team, Mike, on please. Um, minta maaf, that team. Your mic is not on. Uh, Datin, Datin, Datin or Farida? Oh yeah, my mic, <laughs> sorry. Alright. Okay, Assalamualaikum semua, ya Cikgu Fazila uh, and to all present today. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. Um, uh, Alhamdulillah, we are here today uh, in this webinar, Engaging Year One Teachers and Parents with Home-Based Learning. Uh, I'm very grateful for this uh, collaboration. Uh, between JPN Selangor and PPD Petaling Perdana. Okay, dalam uh, musim COVID ni, yeah, while we are in CMCO, MCO, yeah, um, it's very uh, banyak ya yeah, banyak perkara-perkara yang harus kita ambil peduli, yeah. Uh, especially we are teachers, we have to teach, and our students have to learn. Now wherever they are. Wherever we are, we have to teach them, yeah, uh, in whatever ways and the ways or the way we teach the techniques should be fun. Nah, uh, ini murid tahun satu baru nak mula belajar, uh, even they have their preschooling before, but year one is a different, uh, different year of learning. Nah, uh, kami dah bersekolah ni, kata dia. Uh, semua murid-murid saya tengok, ya. Yeah? Ramai yang depan uh, laptop pun pakai baju sekolah. Ha, nak pakai juga baju sekolah. Daripada pagi pukul tujuh setengah nak pergi sekolah mak kata dia kan. Ha, nak pergi sekolah. So they are very eager to learn. Uh, so teachers also uh, we are very eager to teach. Uh, so adakah kita memenuhi kehendak anak-anak kita? Ya, yeah? uh, Ni sekolah tak pernah pergi lagi. Macam mana? Macam mana rupa sekolah kita mak kata dia. Uh, so, cikgu have to teach, have to let them know uh, this is our school. So, take the videos around the school. Ambil tempat-tempat yang menarik. Uh, tunjukkan kepada anak-anak so that dalam diri mereka, I want to go to school. Always, I want to go to school because I want to learn. So, unfortunately, so our students have to learn 
from home. So our home-based learning should be very engaging and also very fun. Ha, so jangan buat anak kita ini tidak mahu menghadap muka kita. Ha, mereka juga harus kenal anak guru-guru mereka. Mana rupa Cikgu Fazila, mana rupa Cikgu On, mana rupa Cikgu Ali. Ha, so ramai semua nak tengok mana rupa Cikgu-Cikgunya. Mana rupa guru besar. Ha, so they have to know. Uh, so in order for them to know this, to know the school, to, to love the school, so we teachers need to expose, need to give them the knowledge, need to give them the information. Uh, so itulah dalam kita membimbing ya anak-anak kita untuk belajar anak-anak kita perlu tahu uh, ilmu yang asas hmm. tadi ilmu asas tentang sekolah sekarang ilmu asas tentang tadi cikgu Fazila ada sebut dia menyu asas untuk belajar. Tiga, kalau asasnya tidak kuat, the basicnya. Uh, so uh, hari ini ya, anak-anak kita dah pandai masuk so, year one semua dah pandai. Dah pandai membaca. Uh, have to look at the pace of our students. We look, we have to look at the level of our students. Kan? Uh, so um, hari ini kita akan ada tiga orang guru yang akan berkongsi. Uh, berkongsi um, how to teach our students from home. Uh, how can parents help us to teach our students? We love them. We want them to excel in their education. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, ibu bapa harusnya sama-sama dengan kita. Yeah. So, uh, kerjasama itu sangat kami harapkan jika ada dia yang membeli pada cikgu-cikgu kerana cikgu ni juga ada kekangannya. Ya, yeah, we also learn from each other. Ha, tapi ke, kehendak itu tidak seperti yang kami, uh, tidak seperti dalam ingatan kami, kan? Ha, so, feel free to give us the idea, the idea, give us the suggestion so we can take it up, we will do our best to cheat, to teach. Uh, the students. Yeah, especially today we look at year one. Okay, so jumpa lagi semua. Uh, saya harap kita sama-sama ya yeah, belajar bagaimana ya yeah, untuk mengajar anak-anak kita the best ever way that we can do. Okay, okay. Assalamualaikum dan jumpa lagi. Terima kasih Dati di atas ucapan tadi. Saya dah dengar Satin bercakap tu, saya rasa excited nak dengar apa yang cikgu-cikgu ni nak share. So, and it's true, we miss our children and we can't wait to actually teach them face to face, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we it, we cannot do anything as uh, so that we have to teach uh, using the home-based learning. But I'm sure these teachers, the three amazing presenters are going to share a lot of strategies and activities with us today, right? So, um... Let's, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let me uh, move to introduce the first presenter for today. Madam Subatra Saras Anak Perempuan Selia from SJKT Ladang Kinerara. So, over to you, Madam Suba. A very good afternoon to Datin Nur Farida. Binti Abu Bakar, the Deputy of Director of Learning Sector JPN Selangor, Puan Haja Hanis Muhammad Yusof and Madam Zahira Zulkifli from JPN Selangor, and Puan Nurlina On Abdullah, SIS C+, PPD Petaling Perdana, and my fellow teachers and parents. We are here today to share some ideas on engaging year one teachers and parents with home-based learning for our lovable young learners. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati, hari ini 
kita akan meluangkan masa bersama sama untuk membincangkan tentang beberapa kaedah pengajaran dan pembelajaran di rumah untuk anak-anak kesayangan kita. Ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. What is home-based learning? Home-based learning is an alternative to face-to-face -face lessons. It is conducted by teachers with the help of parents. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, pengajaran dan pembelajaran di rumah adalah alternatif kepada sesi bersemuka di sekolah. Ia dikendalikan oleh guru dengan bantuan ibu bapa. Next. The home-based learning had to be conducted due to the pandemic. Teachers do not get to meet the pupils face to face. Pupils. Next. Pupils only got the chance to be in school for a few months in the year 2020. Hence, the learning and teaching session was interrupted. Next. The purpose of conducting home-based learning is to get ready the young learners for future learning in class. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, pengajaran dan pembelajaran di rumah dilaksanakan kerana guru-guru tidak dapat bersemuka murid di sekolah. Murid-murid hanya mengikuti pe pembelajaran secara bersemuka selama beberapa bulan, bulan sahaja kerana pandemik. Pengajaran dan pembelajaran di rumah juga bertujuan untuk murid-murid menghadapi sesi pengajaran dan pembelajaran serca, secara bersemuka. Next. Dear teachers, let's begin with teacher's role. The first principle. Design task with purpose. As teachers, we need to determine the objective and the learning task or activity should be designed for a reason or to achieve a specific goal and must be engaging for children. The activities help the students to draw their attention while providing opportunities to learn new material. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, sebagai guru, kita harus melaksanakan PDPR dengan menetapkan objektif yang sesuai. Ia dapat meng, uh, menjadikan murid aktif dalam sesi PDPR. The next principle, the instructions need to be clear and consistent. The teacher who conducts the PDPR lessons need to give directions clearly to the pupils and parents to follow. Tuan Tuan dan Puan Puan, sebagai guru, penerangan perlu jelas dan konsisten. Penerangan ini akan diberikan kepada murid-murid dan ibu bapa. Next. Sebagai guru, kita juga perlu mengenal pasti kekuatan aktiviti, iaitu objektif aktiviti. Aktiviti ini harus disusun dan dilaksanakan supaya murid-murid dapat uh, mengambil semua kekuatan daripada aktiviti tersebut. Seterusnya, next. Komunikasi. Dear teachers and parents, the teachers need to prioritize social communications, which means they have to, this is the first time the children is being engaged in the online learning. They have not been to school before. 
so they need to embrace the environment and uh, and they should have a good communication skill with the teachers the teacher should give time for the children to respond during the online lesson embrace the next principle is embracing the environment the teacher need to embrace the environment by linking and connecting our environment to the lesson the last the next one the teacher need to celebrate specific successes for example the teacher need to appreciate if the children has done well appreciation is something that uh, that gives us more energy and gives us uh, space to to engage more actively in the teaching and teaching lessons tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dikasihi komunikasi antara guru dan murid murid uh, antara guru dan murid merupakan satu kepentingan bagi untuk melaksanakan PDPR ini. Guru harus sentiasa uh, menanyakan ataupun uh, mengenal pasti apa meminta murid untuk memberikan feedback yang sesuai. Murid-murid juga Guru-guru juga perlu memahami suasana. Maksudnya, guru harus engage pelajar dengan suasana yang betul. Peng, sebagai penghargaan, murid-murid harus dihargai untuk uh, apabila mereka melakukan sesuatu dengan betul. Penghargaan boleh diberi dalam bentuk ayat, perkataan ataupun cendramata. Mengapa kita perlu menghargai murid? Kerana ia merupakan dorongan kepada murid untuk melibatkan diri supaya mereka dapat mengaktifkan diri dalam PDPR secara kerap dan aktif. Next. As for teachers, we need to prepare for home-based lesson. It just needs us to spend some time before our lesson to plan, to plan the lesson with clear objective. Objective PDPR harus dirancang dengan teliti sebelum kita melaksanakan sesi PDPR. Seterusnya, we have to decide on the methods of teaching. Are we going to use the online method or offline? And the third one, we have to prepare the hands-on materials to be shared with the pupils. Pupils, okay. These materials uh, includes the module or the online assessment papers. The next one, they should communicate. The teachers need to communicate, have to communicate with parents regarding the materials they need to get ready for the home-based learning. Uh, the list of materials should be sent a week earlier in the group WhatsApp or Telegram for the parents to get ready the materials on the particular day. And the, la and the next one, the teacher can record the lesson for the pupils who could not join the class and upload it later. It could be done by a parent too. The teacher need to discuss with the parents and let someone to take over the job. Before starting a lesson, the teacher need to explain what the pupils can and cannot do during the lesson. This could be posted in the group telegram or WhatsApp before. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dikasihi, sebelum kita melaksanakan PDPR online, kita perlu merancang 
rancangan pengajian hari, pengajaran harian kita dengan objektif yang sesuai dan kita juga perlu uh, mel, uh, merancang strategi yang akan kita gunakan untuk mengajar. Semua lembaran kerja ataupun modul perlu disediakan lebih awal untuk memudahkan proses PDPR. Guru juga perlu untuk berkomunikasi dengan ibu bapa mengenai semua bahan atau alatan yang perlu mereka sediakan sewaktu menjalankan sesi PDPR. Senarai bahan ini boleh dihantar seminggu sebelum sesi PDPR. Bagi murid-murid yang tidak dapat sertai dalam sesi PDPR, guru juga perlu mengambil inisiatif, boleh mengambil inisiatif untuk merekod PDPR pada hari tersebut dan menghantarnya ke grup WhatsApp ataupun upload di dalam Google Drive. Perkara ini juga boleh dilakukan oleh ibu bapa sebagai langkah untuk membantu guru. Sebelum sesi PDPR dimulakan, guru boleh menerangkan apa yang perlu, apa yang boleh dan tidak boleh murid buat sewaktu sesi PDPR. Next. Berikut merupakan satu manual pengajaran dan pembelajaran di rumah yang disediakan oleh KPM. Dear teachers and parents, this is a manual of home-based learning for teachers. You can retrieve this manual from the above website. You can download it and print it. The objective of the manual is as this is as a guideline for the teachers to present their home-based learning. Home-based learning. Okay, next. Okay, this is what we suggest to do. What the teacher can do. They can create a telegram group and explain to the parents the objectives of the lessons and the activities and the reasons why we need parents' cooperation. We need the parents' cooperation because the kids, the children did not attend the school and they have to continue their teaching and learning process. The teaching and learning process never stops. And it is very important for the teachers to create a good bond with the parents. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang dihormati. Adalah penting untuk guru menjaga PR dengan ibu bapa. Guru, per, guru boleh mencip, mencipta satu telegram group dan menerangkan kepada ibu bapa mengenai objektif aktiviti yang akan dijalankan dan juga sebab-sebab Kenapa ibu bapa kita memerlukan kerjasama ibu bapa? Adalah sangat penting untuk guru supaya mempunyai satu PR yang yang baik dengan ibu bapa kerana ibu bapa lah yang akan membantu kita untuk mengajar anak-anak murid. Ibu bapa akan membantu kita untuk mengenal uruf dan selalulah berkomunikasi dengan ibu bapa untuk memahami situasi mereka. Next. Dear parents, this is what the parents have to do. The parents can liaise with teachers. They can discuss with the teachers on what they can do and the way to help the teacher out in educating their child. They must follow instructions carefully. 
they must prepare the materials requested by the teachers before the lesson starts. And they should also update the teachers about the progress of their children. Kepada ibu bapa yang dihormati, ini adalah cara-cara untuk ibu bapa. Uh, peranan yang perlu dimainkan oleh ibu bapa dalam PDPR. Ibu bapa perlu selalu berhubung dengan guru dan selalu mengikuti arahan yang dikeluarkan oleh guru. Arahan yang diberikan ada, oleh guru adalah sangat penting untuk melaksanakan aktiviti PDPR. Ibu bapa juga perlu uh, menyediakan bahan-bahan yang diminta oleh guru sebelum sesi PDPR. Setelah aktiviti dijalankan, ibu bapa juga perlu selalu merekodkan kepada merekodkan apa yang telah murid pelajari dan memaklumkannya kepada guru. Next. So, come on parents. Let's be let us make learning fun for the kids. We can create a conducive and fun learning environment at home. Jadi, marilah ibu bapa sekalian. Biar kita mereka satu situasi yang amat conducive dan yang amat diperlukan oleh murid untuk belajar. Next. Dear parents, these are some free apps that you can download from the Play Store. I've tried this. This is called Elmo Knows ABC. Elmo teaches us how to write the letter. The children can write, can track the letter on the screen and if they got it right, Elmo will give, give them the reward. Elmo will also teach the children to pronounce the words. Ibu bapa sekalian, ini adalah beberapa apps percuma yang dapat melicinkan proses pembelajaran di rumah. Ibu bapa boleh download app ini di handphone masing-masing dan membiarkan anak anda main. Elmo mengajar anak kita untuk menulis dan uh, dan sebutan bagi uruf-uruf bahasa. Next. Ini juga merupakan satu app yang percuma, Alphabet, yang mengajar anak kita untuk perkataan-perkataan uh, yang bermula dengan abjad. Next. This is another app which enables the to the kids to recognize small letter, big letter and some words starting with the letters. Ibu bapa, ibu bapa sekalian, ini juga merupakan satu app yang percuma di mana murid-murid boleh mengenali huruf besar, huruf kecil dan perkataan-perkataan yang bermula dengan abjad yang tertentu. Next. So, come on parents, let's make learning a playtime. The children will learn through games and experience that they gained. Marilah ibu bapa sekalian murid kita murid boleh bermain sambil belajar dan belajar melalui pengalaman next
ini sa- that's all for today this is end of my slot and uh, I will I would like to thank PPD Petaling Perdana and JPN for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. All right, thank you Madam Suba. Thank you for sharing um, the few apps that teachers uh, parents can download to teach their their kids at home. Right? Now, um viewers you can actually type any comments or uh, questions that you want to ask our presenters all right and then i'll address it and our presenters can answer them okay all right so now let's move on to our second presenter i would like to invite miss nidia someone that's from sk jalan ut let's welcome miss nidia Okay, uh, thank you Fazila. Okay, salam perpaduan and good afternoon. Sudatin Nur Farida binti Abu Bakar, the Deputy Director of Learning Sector, JPN Selangor. Puan Hajar Hanisa, Mama Yusuf, Cik Zahira Zulkifli from JPN Selangor. Beloved Puan Nolina On, Abdullah, SISC Plus, PPD Ketalian Perdana. My fellow teachers from Tuaran, and parents. We are here to share some ideas about fun activities. Okay, we have heard from Madam Suba regarding step number one. So we shall start with number step number two. Next. Um, thank you. Okay. Next. Step two, then, okay. One more. Uh, one more. Uh, MK, I think I'll share. Uh, can you see this? Can someone give me a feedback? Fazila, can you see my, my slides? Oh, yes, you can, yes. Okay, so I begin. Okay, I'll start with step number two. Okay, we're going to start with techniques. Okay, why we have to explain about techniques? Okay, teachers, we need to know the techniques. What are the techniques that we're going to use for certain activities? And we are going to explain it to the parents. What are the techniques? Um, we, and we have to share these ideas and the steps with the parents to guide them so that they can conduct the teaching and the learning session at home. Okay. Okay. Uh, para ibu bapa, uh, kongsi teknik pengajaran, idea dan juga cara melaksanakan aktiviti di dalam telegram agar ibu bapa dapat melaksanakan aktiviti ini di rumah. Okay. Next is material. Okay. Okay, teachers, we should prepare the templates. We should, we should, okay, the template, I'll show you the templates. This is a, this is one of the example. For, this is one of the example of the template for one activity, okay? So next, we should list down the materials, okay? This is the sample. Okay, if you see, list of the materials needed for the mini cup scheme. So it's that, it's like mini cup, we have template, Mark a pen to write the alphabets on top of the mini cups. Okay. Upload in the Telegram or an FB group so that the parents could download and print it. Please do it earlier, at least one week earlier, so that the parents can buy and prepare the materials. Okay. Cikgu-cikgu, sediakan template bahan cetakan untuk para ibu bapa. Sediakan senarai bahan yang diperlukan untuk aktiviti tersebut dan sila berikan pilihan. Kadang-kadang barang yang kita expect parents ada memang tak ada. So kita bagi dia pilihan. Okay, saya akan bagi contoh kemudian. Okay, step number four. Okay, we have to give a sample of video. Okay, uh, you can use your phone. Okay, we should prepare the videos. 
what type of videos that we need. Okay, one, how to prepare the materials. Okay, for example, if you want the parents to draw on a piece of newspaper, you have to show them what are you, uh, what, are, what are the pictures that is, they're supposed to draw and how they're supposed to draw, what are the materials to be used for that particular uh, material. Okay, second, how to conduct the game in a fun way. Okay, uh, you, you cannot expect the parents uh, to know how to conduct the game in a fun way. So teachers, I'm, I'm quite sure you all know how to conduct the games in a fun way. Okay, third is how to guide the kids. Okay, I'll show you. Okay. Uh, sediakan video. Cikgu-cikgu kena sediakan video ya. Uh, cara penyediaan bahan. Okay, for example, uh, cikgu nak buat guna, uh, cikgu kena bagi option. Kadang-kadang parent tak boleh keluar, uh, mungkin suaminya ber, uh, bekerja, so ibu kena sediakan bahan di rumah. So, kita gunakan bahan-bahan yang boleh kita guna pakai balik. Contohnya, surat kabar lama, majalah lama, okay. Cara nak melaksanakan permainan aktiviti tersebut dengan menarik, ha, itu pun kena terangkan sebab uh, uh, ini daripada experience saya, bila saya uh, minta parents uh, buat laksanakan aktiviti, mereka buat terlalu serius. Lebih garang dan juga lebih uh, serius, anak-anak pun takut. So, kita kena bagi dia cadangan untuk uh, kita nak bagi murid tu rasa ruja nak main permainan tu. Okay, the third one is cara nak menegur atau memberi pujian terhadap anak-anak. Disebabkan oleh ibu bapa yang terlibat dengan aktiviti, mereka akan menjadi garang dan mereka akan marah. Kadang-kadang mereka uh, cara kataan yang mereka guna mungkin akan menyinggung perasaan anak-anak. So, kita kena uh, explain, kita kena terangkan kenapa kita kena jaga perasaan anak-anak semasa main. Sebab kalau kita marah anak-anak, dia takkan ada confident untuk buat lagi, untuk cuba lagi. Uh, okay, yeah? okay, next. Video one. MK. Okay, wait now. Um. Rasa saya kena tunjuk. Uh, nampak tak uh, skrin ni? Uh, can someone see? Yep, we can see. Yep. So, I play ya? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but not now, Tia. You see Tia, we can't see it now. Huh? We can't see it now. You can't see it now? No. Just now, it was fine. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, wait. Okay, need to present a uh, screen, uh, Nitya. Present okay. the screen. Now. Can you? Can you see now? Yes. Now we can see it. Okay, thank you. No, oh, not now. Not now? Yeah, it's gone. But we can only hear the voice. Can you help me with the video? Thank you, MK. Okay, MK. MK? All right. Uh, now back, huh? Okay, I'll share back. 
Okay. So, teachers, you have seen the video, right? Okay. Uh, next, is supposed to, teachers, we need to give them a checklist to the parents. Okay. What is the checklist for? This is a checklist of alphabets. Okay. Uh, it's for the um, capital letter and for the lowercase. We need to identify whether your child can recognize the alphabet. Okay. Senarai saya mak huruf ni disediakan oleh guru. Uh, ibu bapa dikehendaki mengisi senarai semak ni semasa mereka membuat aktiviti. Tujuan senarai semak ni adalah untuk senaraikan semua huruf-huruf anak yang masih keliru dan tidak kenal. Seterusnya, aktiviti yang kita akan buat kemudian, kita akan uh, contohnya intervensi dan juga modul akan disediakan berdasarkan dengan data ni. Okay? Okay, next. Okay. Okay, first thing, uh, you should give the template for the alphabets. If parents got a printer, they can actually print it out. If you don't have a printer, you can actually cut a box and just write, simply write with a marker pen. Okay, first teachers, you need to provide examples, letters and parents. This is, this is the first thing you're supposed to do. Because we're going to teach them how to, uh, the template is for the letters. Okay, video number two. Um, MK. MK, are you there? Okay, hari ni kita nak tak angkap lady bird. bird. Okay, kita mulakan. Okay, if you if you watch the video uh, uh teachers and the parents, the mother is saying the letter and the kid actually swat the box. W. Okay. Okay. Thank you, MK. Okay. Share the link. Okay. So this is the activity number one. Okay. This is a template that I did for, we did for toy hammer game, okay? So this is a template. If you have a printer, you can actually print it. And how you do play? When, you, when the mother say a letter, the child will go and bang the letter. So if you have two child to compete, it will become fun. Okay, if you see, number one, mother will say letter, the child will hit the letter, and then you can practice a few times for certain certain letters. Then stick different letters. That means you give them a template without letters. So the mother will actually can stick the uh, stickers there so, so that they can actually exchange the uh, letters. To make it more interesting, try to play with a partner and a token. That means when they hit, who, the person who hit the first will take the token and you can see who's the winner. Okay. Uh, okay. 
guru-guru uh, kena sediakan dalam bentuk PDF sebab kadang-kadang ibu ni uh, kita tak boleh paksa ibu uh, membuat semua untuk kita. So kita boleh benda-benda uh, material ni saya rasa cikgu-cikgu boleh sediakan. Okey, ibu menyebut huruf manakala anak akan mengetuk mengetuk huruf tersebut dengan menggunakan toy hammer. Kalau tak ada toy hammer, mami gulung di surat khabar boleh, boleh guna uh, pembaris, boleh guna senduk, apa-apa pun boleh. Okey, asalkan boleh ketuk. Okey, then tampal stiker huruf yang lain pada template ini dan ulang balik aktiviti yang sama. So, this template boleh guna untuk berkali-kali dan untuk uh, dan masa yang panjang lah. Mula-mula kita nak tampal huruf boleh. Kalau kita nak buat balik uh, setelah murid dah menguasai uh, letters, mungkin kita boleh lekatkan huruf, uh, perkataan minta maaf. Boleh tampalkan perkataan. Contohnya macam uh, three words perkataan. Cup, mark. Okay, bila mami sebut, dia akan ketuk. So, it, it's template ni akan berguna bukan saja untuk aktiviti ni, boleh digunakan sepanjang tahun. Okey, permainan ni lebih menarik sekiranya main bersama abang atau kakak. Kalau main seseorang, mak sebut anak dia ketuk seseorang, lama-lama jadi boring. So kita kena jadikan aktiviti ni menarik, kita bagi dia macam mungkin kita bagi gula-gula ke sebagai penghargaan siapa yang menang dapat gula-gula, siapa yang menang dapat ni sesuatu. So uh, pandai-pandailah ya, yeah, mamis. Okey, next. Okay, for those who doesn't have a printer, they can actually do this. This is what I did for, uh, I draw the box on the newspaper. Okay, just using a watercolor is one, I think you, you only need two colors, yellow and black. And then you don't have to write the words, the letters on the box. If possible, uh, make it blank and then you just stick a sticker there so you can reuse it. And if you see uh, on my right, Uh, a child is actually, uh, she's producing her own own uh, template. She draws a picture of a tree and she put apples on it. Okay, so. Okay, this is activity two. Uh, we use mini cups. If if mommy, you have mommy, uh, parents, kalau ada uh, mini cups, kita boleh menggunakan mini cups. Mini cups is actually very, very useful. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, this is the template that I gave. So they actually can play with it. Okay, what are the activities they can do? One, you can, the mother can say a letter and the child can actually um, uh, rearrange the mini cups according to the numbers. That is for listen and arrange. And then you can actually place small stickers, maybe capital letters on each balloons so the child can actually match the capital letters with the small letter. So you can actually, um, very creative, yeah? Mami, eh? parents, eh? uh, uh, cikgu-cikgu pun boleh gunakan template yang sama untuk aktiviti yang berbeza. Kita cuba gunakan benda yang sama untuk uh, kegunaan sepanjang tahun supaya kita uh, benda tu uh, lebih, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, what do you say, uh? Uh, it's more useful. Okay, see, print the template, write the alphabets on the mini cups, or you can use, okay, kalau tak ada mini cups, mini cups tu susah nak cari, kalau nak beli, kena beli dekat kedai-kedai uh, jual plastik, but you can actually uh, use the bottle caps, you know, the mini bot, uh, the, um, what do you call that, um, Minerals bottle caps, you can use the uh, bottle caps, you can actually use, you can actually cut uh, boxes into round round shape and you can write the letters, okay, and then mother will say a letter, then the child will choose the mini cups and put it on the template according to the number. So that means the mother have to check whether the child put the right alphabets on the, uh, in the templates. Okay, next, activity two. Ah, okay, saya terangkan ya, disediakan dalam bentuk PDF. Kalau ibu tak ada um, uh, printer, boleh lukis ni. Tak semestinya ada Spiderman, tak semestinya ada Baby Girl. Just buat bulat-bulat-bulat pun, so, letak nombor pun okey. Tak kisah. Kalau saya, saya suka, le saya lebih suka, saya lebih gemar. Saya akan tanya dengan anak murid saya apakah uh, kartun-kartun yang mereka suka. So, saya suka senarakan, uh, saya suka gunakan watak-watak uh, yang mereka suka. That means you, they will have fun. If they see the the character in the templates is something that they like, okay.
Okay. Okay. Again. <laughs> MK. Hmm. Okay. If you look at the video, the child said the letter M, but he is actually having difficulties to write the letter. Sometimes they recognize the letter, but they couldn't write it. So okay. we actually have to watch the video to see whether the child really can identify and write the letters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, MK. Okay. Okay, this is activity number three. This is is this is more focusing on writing activity. If you see, okay, what are the things you're supposed to tell the parents? Materials needed. You may use flour, sugar, sand, salt. Okay, and then you have to tell them you have to use a plate or a tray. Okay, and it's very simple. You just put it on a plate and you say the letter and ask the child to write. Actually, you can see whether they write write the letters properly. Sometimes they, they, the way they write is wrong. So you, you can actually teach your kids there. I'm, I'm, but, um, okay, this is activity number three. Untuk kemahiran menulis, ya, ibu bapa, uh, okay, sediakan bahan, bahan keperluan, contohnya tepung, garam, gula, pasir, beras. Ada juga parents yang dari sekolah saya menggunakan oats. Saya pun terkejut uh, tengok tapi uh, boleh juga menggunakan oats. Uh, boleh juga uh, uh, gunakan, kita tak payah gunakan benda ni, kita bawa anak kita keluar kalau ada uh, pasir, boleh minta anak anak kita buat ke, uh, uh, projek ni di luar, ni sambil bersantai. Okay, ibu bapa, uh, ibu menyebut huruf manakala anak meniru dan menulis di atas tepung. Yang ni uh, mami, mami boleh buat sambil masak ya. Sambil masak mami sebut uh, anak main dengan tepung. Uh, tepung tu simpanlah mami, jangan buang. Okay. Next, video number four. Again. <laughs> MK. MK, not this one, fought now. Lompat, pijak, lepas itu. Tengah sebuah kurang. Hai.
Eh. Okay, so this is the activity for number four. Okay, if you have tiles at home, actually you can do the uh, hopscotch. That means a tang tang object. Okay, okay. For example, I've given here. Okay, for example, there are one, two, three, four, and five, six. We have like five boxes here, and I ask them to place the easiest on the four boxes and only two in the uh, the one uh, the one that they did, uh, they don't recognize. Put it in a uh, two boxes so that they won't feel demotivated. Okay. Okay, bahan-bahan uh, yang diperlukan, uh, kalau ada kapu, boleh guna kapu. Kalau ada tape, boleh guna tape. Kalau ada tiles, tak perlu ada. Uh, kalau tak ada tiles, tak ada apa-apa. Uh, Mami boleh guna kotak, kertas, semua boleh. Uh, kalau nak tengok contoh-contoh uh, video-video -contoh, uh, yang uh, parents uh, saya upload, nanti saya akan bagi link uh, Facebook saya. Dalam tu memang ada macam-macam cara, cara lah. Okay. Cara nak bermain, lompat ikut petak dan sebut huruf maybe like once, two times, it's up to you. You can actually ask them to say, don't ask them to say it once. Maybe they can actually repeat for three times, two times. Okay. Then after that, you just change uh, the letters and ask them to uh, play again. Okay. Next. Main bersama adik-beradik is lagi menyeronokkan sebab... Uh, Nanti kan orang akan compete uh, di, uh, Dan dalam video tu Kalau uh, uh, parents cikgu-cikgu perasan Sebenarnya uh, adik dia menang Bermain dengan abang dia Sampai, sampai abang dia menangis uh, Video tu pun mami dia upload dalam uh, Facebook saya, tergelak saya Okay, anak-anak uh, yang Lebih tua ni, uh, dia tak boleh Nak menerima yang kecil ni menang uh, Okay, next Cara yang paling berkesan untuk mengajar murid Kenal huruf dengan cara yang amat mudah Dan jimat, okay Uh, why am I saying this? Because I have tried this in the school. Okay, I've been teaching year one for 18 years. So this is what I do. For, last time when I had Linus, this is what I do for construct one and construct two. I do the tang tang and I ask them to line up and then just lompat, lompat, lompat dan senang. Senang kita nak tafsir, senang nak taksi, senang nak kita. Murid suka sebab benda tu lompat, lompat is more like a game. So uh, it's easy. Trust me. Okay, this is actually, okay, I'll show you here. This is actually a reward board. Okay, this is actually for the one um, promising learners untuk murid-murid yang masih tidak memuasai huruf. Okay, what they supposed to do? You give them a, a picture of kepala caterpillar. Okay, so what they'll do, they will stick all the letters that They learn. Okay, for example, if anak tu baru kenal tiga huruf, dia akan tampal tiga huruf. Each and every day, they will add their, add the body for the caterpillar and the caterpillar will grow long. You can actually hang it on the door. This is actually to encourage and motivate the child. The longer the caterpillar, lagi seronok lah mereka nanti. Okay, mami buatlah besar. Tak kisahlah kepala siapa. Kepala anak pun boleh juga. Boleh je. Be creative. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is the assessment I, I got it from after the activities. Remember that I gave them a checklist for the parents to write down. They're supposed to write down, okay, if you see all the thick ones, they are the kids, they actually recognize all the letters. And the blue ones is the, the, the students that they're still struggling to recognize the letters. I asked the parents to list down the letters so that we can actually do the other activities based on the that particular uh, letters. Okay, I show you. Okay, this is the intervention or intervency. Okay, for example, this is the focusing uh, letters on my right here. Okay, how to play? This is a normal rule for uh, snake and ladder. Okay, following the rules of the actual game. Okay, the child rolls the dice and then moves along the spaces according to the number. And then the child says the letter. Okay, for example, uh, they rolls the dice, dapat nombor dua. So the child's dice will be in 
number two and the child have to say b okay you put the rules if you want the child to say two times you ask them to say two times so the child will say b b and then the thing is like you, you have to repeat the same action until they reach the uh, home there okay when the child lands on a ladder the child goes up and when the child lands on the snakes the slides they have to slide downwards okay so uh, you can actually give them a, te a, a template that doesn't have any letters on it so the parents can actually write using the marker pen okay These are the pupils' outcome that um, you, you can see. Yeah? Uh, of all the activities that I gave to the parents, okay, they came up with some of the activities. For example, if you see on my left here, they have like grapes, right? The mom will say and the girl will take the grapes and put it into the basket. That is something new because, uh, okay. And then if you see on my right here, the child did the caterpillar. But it's, it's not a caterpillar, it's, it's fish. So she's going to hang it on her, uh, in her room. Oops. Accidentally stop sharing. Wait, uh, so sorry. Okay. This is material that I show you. Okay. This is another, ah, this, this is the outcome. The girl was doing the, drawing the picture of the uh, tree is now right. Okay. Okay. If you see this, this is a matching game the parents did on their own. Okay. Padankan huruf besar dengan huruf kecil. Activity yang saya minta parents kalau mereka ada idea-idea yang lain, saya suruh saya minta mereka upload dalam FB link yang saya bagi supaya parent-parent lain dapat uh, sumber inspirasi daripada ibu bapa yang lain. Uh, okay. Excuse me, Miss Nitya. Are you sharing? Yes. Your are you sharing? Oh, your no, it's not showing. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Wait, I'm going back. And okay. now it is. Okay, thank you. Now, yes. This one? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can see it. Okay, I ulang balik. Okay. Uh, activity ni dibuat oleh ibu bapa. Okay, mereka buat sendiri matching. Okay, dia buat, uh, dia gunting kertas warna and ask the parents, ask the students to uh, match the capital letter and the small letter. Kalau saya, saya lebih suka bahan ni tak ditampal supaya uh, template tu boleh diulang-ulang kembali. So, saya suka buat modul di mana mereka akan tampalkan semua, semua material, semua uh, vocab, semua alphabet, semua yang bahan-bahan uh, yang uh, kami uh, upload dalam template tu untuk ditampal dalam modul tu. So, mereka akan menggunakan balik bahan tu untuk buat aktiviti. That means they have a place where to keep all the material, all the pictures. So, uh, that one I will upload in the FB later. Okay, these are the picture. You can see the tank tank. They use the tape to do at, in, at, at home. Okay, yang ni ialah borang pentaksiran yang uh, ibu ni buat di atas kertas maju. Uh, okay, ini adalah bahan-bahan mengajar yang boleh digunakan. These are the things that I use in my school actually. Okay, you can actually use the plastic uh, eggs here and then uh, bigger cups and then you can use uh, rubbers, erasers that have alphabets on it. Okay, and then, okay, you can actually use the mini cups and all these letters to teach words and even phrases. Okay, so it is really, really useful. Okay, these are the samples that, this is last year's pictures, uh, mummies, uh, parents. Gambar-gambar yang saya, masa saya bersemuka dengan parents tahun lepas, okay, untuk membuat uh, saringan. Okay, bahan-bahan yang murid-murid suka, bahan-bahan yang anak-anak memang suka. Mereka suka menggunakan bahan. Okay, if you see, uh, can you see on my right here, I use the mini cups to teach the uh, this is actually phonics for phonics, okay? So when I say the phonics, they will actually take and put and they can even in for spelling, okay? And uh, on my uh, left here is the template that I use in the classroom. 
So other than you just show a piece in, a, in your book sheet or in a in a newspaper in your books, okay? I think the template is really really useful because they come and then they just arrange match it and it's easier for you to check. Okay. After, for example, kalau uh, sekiranya anak-anak perempuan dah pandai, dah pandai, dah kenal huruf, seterusnya, we will teach phonics. And then, this is my style. Uh, I'll go for phonics and then I'll go for vocab. Uh, three letter words first. Then we go into phrases, then sentences. Okay. Uh, these are the activities that you can actually prepare at home for your kids. Okay. Uh, this is, if you see, they have pictures and they have to the color, they can, have to identify the words. That means they have to read, able to read. Okay. The D here on my right is the spelling. Okay. It's simple. It's three letter words. I'm sure they can actually spell. Okay. E, E is spelling as well. Okay. And F, this is more of to phrases and vocab. That means this is, uh, these are the, all colors. Okay, next, uh, here is the numbers, and the last one is vocab okay, two. Okay. Okay, for timing, I think that's all. I hope uh, it is uh, whatever that I share is um, could help you in the school. Be creative and please share your ideas in our telegrams and with all the teachers here so that we don't have issues uh, teaching our kids at home and in, during this pandemic. Thank you. Back to you, Fazila. All right, thank you uh, for sharing some creative and fun way, uh, Ms. Nitya. Thank you for sharing the insightful ways on how teachers and parents can work together in conducting a fun home-based learning. Right, it's your your activities are all fun, but then at the same time they are learning. Right, it's not just fun. Right, okay. So and then when you give um proper guidance, instructions, and I'll, I I really like it where actually parents can use whatever they have at home. Right, you will yeah. say the fly quarter. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So now we know that we can actually make things work despite the MCO. Learning can still take place, although we are not at school and pupils can learn in a fun way. Thank you once again, Miss Nithya. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lam. Okay, so now we have come to our last presenter. Let us welcome Mr. Hafiz Mungin from SK Jalan U3. Right, Mr. Hafiz, over to you. So Hafiz, don't forget your mic. Your mic is not turned on. I'm so sorry. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sure. clear. All right, okay. okay. All right, thank you, um, our MC. Uh, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very pleasant uh, afternoon. I would, I would, uh, I bid to Datin Nur Farida binti A. Bakar, Timbalan Pengarah Sektor Pengajaran JPN Selangor. Puan Hajar Hanisa, Muhammad Yusof, serta Cik Zahira Zulkifli, wakil dari JPN Selangor, Puan Nur, Nurlina On Abdullah, SISC Plus, Petaling Perdana, presenters and all teachers, and also parents. Today, I want to share with you on how to use Padlet in order to teach English. I know that most of you are quite familiar with Padlet application, especially the teachers but only a few that realize on how amazing this app could be to uh, in order to facilitate our online teaching and learning. Baiklah tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, untuk sesi seterusnya, fokus perkongsian saya adalah kepada guru-guru bahasa Inggeris. Justeru saya mohon untuk berbicara dalam bahasa Inggeris. Namun begitu, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan boleh mendengar juga uh, sesi perkongsian saya ini. Jangan risau. Kita sama-sama belajar dalam menggunakan App aplikasi Padlet. Baiklah. Okay, teachers. All right. This is the Padlet that I'm going to use for my presentation. See, you can use it as a, a presentation tool. All right. Can you please click at 20 ways to use Padlet? 
All right, can you see it? Here are the 20 useful ways to use Padlet in Classroom. To name a few, such as poster presentation, classroom bulletin, video collection, gallery, and so on. Try to imagine that Padlet is just like a whiteboard, LCD, TV, projector, and computer combined. It is very interactive and it facilitates the collaborative learning. The disadvantages the, uh, in using Padlet, however, uh, the best it can be as a, uh, as a learning tool. There are some disadvantages. Can you please click at the disadvantages? Yes, the, the limitation. There are some disadvantages or limitation in using Padlet application. For example, if you're using Padlet Basic, you will only have access to three, pad, uh, three Padlets. If you wish to go for Padlet Pro, um, you need to spend quite a hefty price, which around 12 ringgit and more for a month. If you think that this would worth it, just go for it, teacher. But if you think that this is not, uh, this is not a good investment, you may try to find any other apps for education that are free or at a reasonable price. Okay, there are thousands of apps out there, so don't worry, teachers. I'm not going to push. I'm not going to push you to use Padlet, but it is up to you whether you want to use it, whether you think towards the end of my presentation. Do you, if you think that it is beneficial, then I would be very glad because you join the team. All right. So the advantages, but still the advantage of using Padlet is that for even the basic Padlet user, the number of Padlets that you can post are unlimited. Can you please click at the advantage? Yes. Oh, no, uh, just double click so that you can zoom in. Double, double tap. Can you double tap it? Can you make it zoom? Can you see it? Okay, All right. So uh, the ad advantage of using Padlet is that even the basic Padlet user, uh, the number of Padlets that you can post are unlimited. You can just post to anyone, anyone's Padlet and anyone can post on your Padlet as long as you provide the link for them. It is an unlimited post. Okay, teacher, teacher and parents. Next. Okay, now I have prepared a tutorial video for those who do not know how to set up the Padlet. Let us watch the video. Firstly, you need to go to the Google Play or App Store to download the application. Can you please increase the volume? Click on the app. This interface will appear on your screen. Click the sign up button. Then you are required to sign up either by using your own Delima ID your personal Gmail or any other email. This time around, I'm going to sign up with my own Yahoo email. Fill up the password. Then you're required to select your membership. For time being, just use basic membership. You can always upgrade it later. Now, you're successfully registered. Okay, viewers, at this point, you have your very own Padlet account ready to be used. What you shall see here is the interface of the Padlet app on your mobile phone. So now, let us move to step number three. First of all, you need to click the Make button at top left side. 
At this moment, you will see a lot of selections, namely wall, canvas, stream, grid, shelf, back channel, map, and timeline. These templates serve their purposes for different activities. For the first time user, just click wall. You can always change it later. Now, the very first purpose is ready to go. In order to change the title, you need to double tap on the title. Hmm, let me put here English One Dynamic. Besides that, you can add the description of your method. In this case, I'm going to put my name, Mr. Hafiz. Don't worry, you can always edit the title and description at any time. And finally, click the save button. There you are, a perfect Padlet for you to use with your new students. Now, let us move to step number four. How to post your first shutdown or ideas on the Padlet wall. First and foremost, click the plus button at the top right. An interface will appear at the bottom of your screen. You can write down the title of your post, options, you name it. Here, I would like to give a welcome note to my students. Okay, it's all done. And now, just click the post button. How to edit your previous post? First of all, Double click at the plus. You shall see this interface coming up from the bottom of your screen. Click edit to edit your posts. You can either edit your own post or change student's spelling. This time around, I just want to touch my photo. Get the best photo from your phone's gallery. Click the photo, wait for it to load up, and now click save. There you go. One of the best features in Padlet is voice recording. This is a very useful tool, especially for language teachers as we can assess our students' reading and speaking skills. Students can actually record and share their own voice notes in just one click. In order to record your voice, firstly, you need to click the plus button. Then, click the ellipses or triple dots button. Select voice, then start record yourself. After you have finished recording, click Next. Put the title of your recording. You can put your name at the title. Then, finally, click Save. Hello everyone, welcome to the English Padlet. I'm Mr. Harvey's, your English teacher. There are lots of interesting educational videos on YouTube. How can we link those videos into our Padlet? First of all, you need to open the YouTube app and choose any video. Click share at the bottom of the video and copy URL link. Then go back to the Padlet app. Click the plus button and click the URL icon.
paste the URL link of your video. And type the title. Finally, click Post. Your students now will enjoy watching the video that you have attached. Okay, now let us see how to take photos from the app. Firstly, click the plus button. Then, click the camera icon. Your camera will be activated immediately. Then, snap your photo. Click use photo. and put the title lastly click post you can now check your photo attaching the files from the drive you have so many worksheets that you would like to share with your students. How can you do it? Here are six simple steps to share your documents. First, click the plus button. Then, click the ellipses or triple dots icon. After that, select file. Choose your file that you wanted to share with your students. Put the title of the file and finally click post. Your document is ready to be downloaded by your students. Draw, write or doodle. This feature is perhaps most suitable for young learners. Students would be able to write alphabets, draw simple pictures or making a doodle. Firstly, you need to click the plus button. Then, click the triple dots button. Select draw. You can start writing by using your finger. Then click save. Put the title or say something about the writing. You can also ask students to write the name in the title. Then finally click post. That's all 10 basic steps that you need to know in order to use the Padlet application. You can now create an interactive and collaborative learning with your students. Till we meet again, I'm Hafiz. Bye for now. Okay, All right. Thank you for listening and watching the video. Now I'd like to share with you some ideas on how to use the Padlet for online learning. The first Padlet example that you can see on your screen is called Homework Basket. Can, can you please click at the Homework Basket?
Okay, this is this padlet was made to serve as a hub for materials and documents collection. Apart from cascading from uh, your materials and homework in Google Classroom, WhatsApp, Telegram, or any other platforms, you can also arrange your materials collection in Padlet. What you can see here is that the materials were uploaded and arranged from activity one, two, three, and so forth. Okay, this would make it easier for parents to refer to and check for any missing out homeworks. Okay, we shall move to the next, to the next Padlet, which is Book Cafe. All right, secondly, the other way that you can use your Padlet, dear teachers, is by creating a self-access learning center for your students. We have our cell room, but in Pad Padlet, we can do it digitally. I would like to share a Padlet that I've made with, uh, which is Book, Book Cafe. Right, it actually my dream, actually it is my dream to have a, my own cafe, but what to do, uh, pandemic. Um, Nak buka cafe model pun tak ada. So here it is. Uh, welcome to Mr. Hafiz Book Cafe. And of course, at a book cafe, you will have a collection of books. I have uploaded 10 PDF books for them to for my students to read, and they would be updated from time to time. Besides that, I also attach some audiobooks for them to listen to and practice by reading along. Students can watch magazines, language games, fairy tales, short film, read along, BBC Kids TV show, and coming soon, we are going to have our kids cooking show video, all right? And students can also listen to music albums, and I just put nursery rhymes music, but with R&B touch. Do you want to listen? Maybe it, the time is, uh, is up, but... Okay, this is my favorite section of the cafe. Once I come in, I will just straight away click the video. Shall we listen to the jazz music books, Bossa? Just click. All right. Yes. Okay, here it is. See? Jazz music. Right, thank you. All right. So, Jazz music, cafe background, amazing, isn't it? So I'm not saying that my Padlet is amazing, but rather uh, to be able to be in my fantasy book cafe in the middle of MCO with cafe music and ambience is absolutely liberating. All right, shall we move to the next Padlet, which is ice breaking session. Okay, ice breaking session, you can see me with my moustache. I also have done an icebreaking session with my students through Padlet. Here it is, a, an example of icebreaking activity that we have done in our classroom. Students share their personal info and photos. We gave commands and likes to each other. Uh, I would like to suggest that if you wish to do the icebreaking by Padlet, can you please scroll down? Yes, all right. These are my students. Uh, my new students in SK Jalanitiga. Right, thank you so much. Maybe you can ask your students to introduce themselves either through uh, video or audio. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. MK. All right, next, last but not least, is the English Day podcast that we have done in our school. One more thing that you can do in school is having a digital platform for English Day. My English teacher in SK Jalan Utiga had come up with a weekly podcast so students can listen to poems, word, bang, word bangs, and songs. Um, shall we listen to the podcast? You're listening to English Day Podcast at Jalan Utiga. My voice. Hello and a very good day, everyone. Welcome to the English Day podcast at Jala Nutika. You're now with me, Mr. Hafiz, your host for today's podcast. 
guess what? I'm so excited to bring you the very first podcast. Can you show. please scroll down? A lot of interesting things to share with you today. So sit back and enjoy the show. Can you please make it bigger? Pussycat. English Day podcast at Jala Nutiga. You're now with me, Mr. Hafez, your host for today's podcast. Guess what? I'm so excited to bring you our very first podcast okay. show. Can you please skip to the last, to the song? Bye for now. Uh, yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Can you please pause? Pause it. Uh, for for the weekly bank, we decided to list uh, to use the list of what do you call that um, highly high frequency words. So the kids will need to they need to practice, they need to memorize, they need to get all the materials from this platform, and then they need to paste everything in the English Day book. So by the end of the year, we are going to. Uh, have our competition for the best English day book. All right, and can you play it? Let let us listen listen to the song. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for me. I hope that my sharing session today uh, bring more or less some benefit to you. Thank you once again for this great opportunity. And I now shall pass the screen to Ms. Chad Preston. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the sharing about Padlet, uh, Mr. Hafiz. Good job Thank on the step-by-step step instruction on how to use Padlet. Maybe when school reopens, you. you can have your own book cafe in the school. Oh, right? yeah, it's true. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Hafiz, uh, can you maybe share the link for your book cafe? Uh, is it possible for you to, to share it with the yes. audience? Okay. All right, okay. so maybe you can type it in the chat box for the viewers, all right? Yeah, all right. Okay. All right, thank you once again, Mr. Hafiz. All thank right, so all right, before we before we end, I would like to call again for Norlina on Binti Abdullah, SIIC Plus Bahasa, Daerah Petaling Perdana, to give a closing speech. Thank you very much, Fazila. And thank you very much to all the audience today. We hope that um Tani Padana and Selangor have helped all of you in opening up your ideas and your minds to, to how to make fun learning at home. Okay, definitely we need to plan, we need to prepare, and we need to play. So the three P's, and then record and share your, and create memories for your children at home. So ladies and gentlemen, there are some ideas about playing at home. So there are some ideas from my other JUs, my other trainers. It's like the not recognizing the letters. So when we are in the car, we can see the letters um, in the on the car plates. All right, kind of the number plates. Besides alphabets, we can also play with numbers. All right, and then you can also have a game of hide and seek in at home by saying that today we're going to look for all the letter A's. Mummy has hidden a few letter A's and B's. So they have to go around the house and look for letter A's and B's. It can be hidden or it can be on the boxes or on the calendar, on any card that we have at home. So the child can bring you 10 letter A's or show you 10 places with the letter C or the letter Z. They're actually thinking in their mind, running around, seeking for the letters at home. So it's a, it's a five to ten minutes or two minutes game that parents spend time with the children at home to reinforce learning. So you've got recognizing the letters when you're in a car, when we can go out or when we look at a television, 
they can identify the letters and, and they can say it out, spell it out. All right. So um, teachers and parents, we still have our PBD, our assessment. So we hope that the child, if they cannot read, they cannot recognize, they cannot go up. So they cannot improve. So when the teachers of but um have you have identified like how Miss Nitya showed earlier, where we identify the level, break the classes into smaller groups, break the lessons into smaller groups for you to focus on the ones that are left behind. We do not want any child to be left behind. So we do not want the very good ones to keep going on and the very weak ones to stay behind. So ladies and gentlemen, this effort that we sincerely hope that this is only the fifth day of school and we want we don't want anyone to be left behind. So let's us let us work together. And when Hafi is presented the book cafe and there are other materials of reading, this is the differentiated example. Do not leave the ones who are good behind as well. So let them enjoy the joy of reading, the joy of learning the joy of uh, improving themselves. They can, yesterday, one of my, my, my officer, my Timbala, my deputy said, the chuchu, the grandson, I'm also, I'm also a grandmother with a, 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 a granddaughter of about three, nearly four years old, and the child can speak. Nenek saya boleh cakap, nenek saya boleh, I can read, I can speak, I can understand, but I cannot, Read and write. Well, the teachers call me. So we, so listen, ladies and gentlemen, let us not have an illiterate society, an illiterate society that cannot read. So the first steps to reading is alphabets, then they form phonics, and then they form, they recognize words, sentences. And we are, trying our best teach parents that we the, the children are with you at home so uh, we reach out to you and i truly appreciate the team of teachers out there uh, i send our regards from our um, ppd officer Tuan abu manso bin satri his regards and his appreciation to all his teachers for coming up with the effort to reach out to the whole country and do feel free to share our recording, to come and visit us again, um, to invite parents and teachers to, to learn, to practice teaching, um, at the, to play with our children at home, okay? And our grandchildren at home. All right, so let's have fun. Thank you, Nitya. Thank you, Subhadra. Thank you, Hafiz. Thank you, Fazila. Thank you, MK. Thank you, Fazil, um, Zahira from GPN. And I'll leave it to Fazila because, to Fazila because um, there might be questions um, that we can still um, attend to before the end of the session. All right. Thank you, Fazila. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you, Panarlina. All right. Thank you, Panarlina. All right, uh, when I was scrolling down the comments, there is actually a question that was asked by um, one of the viewers. Okay, maybe I shall address this to everyone uh, of the, uh, every, uh, to everyone here, the presenters. All right, uh, she asked actually, uh, any suggestions on how to give on spelling, uh, uh, what was the question about, right? Um, let me just look at it. Um, any suggestions how to give online spelling to the pupils? This was asked by Evelyn Emmy. So anyone can answer it for her? Miss Nitya, maybe you can answer it? Can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Yes. Uh, is she asking that we... we when we are using a Google Meet, is it? Uh, no, it's just, just a question on, maybe she wants to know yeah. how you online put it in yeah. or it's an online spelling, yeah. If it's, if it's an online Google Meet, it's going to be hard because you have to go like one by one. But if you ask the parents to do the spelling 
and record the video, it will be easier for you. I mean, they can actually upload in the FB. So the teachers actually can go and look at the videos and comment there. And you can keep it as a evidence for your pentaksiran to be PVD. I think that is a better way. for, Especially for the year one, I think the best way is by playing with materials, using the materials. I think, I hope I did answer the questions. <laughs> For anyone with any views, Afis? Yeah, uh, anyone else? Afis or maybe Madam Suba? Huh? Okay, I have a suggestion that you can go. If let's say if you want your students to have like arra arrangement um, activity by using internet online, you can go to BBC, um, BBC Learn English for kids learning english for kids something like that i i do i i have no idea i know i i don't remember the name of the website but you can actually go to bbc Le uh, kids learning english so they have lots of materials and then they have maybe you can try um and apps with your kids at home uh, for example the apps that I, I have just, let me check. Charades, do you know charades? Yeah, charades yeah. like this. Okay, all right. Charades is like some um, where you can play with your students or you can have your, it's like something like you put your phone on, on, on top of your head and then you, uh, you so that you can, you, you can use that kind of apps to teach English, uh, and at the same time, it would be very interacting, interactive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hafiz. All right. Even um, there's also uh, the un the question was also answered by one of our viewers saying that I check my year six pupils for their spelling during Google Meet by asking them to type on the chat box. Yes, that one is like immediate response, right? We can just check it at that time. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, before we end, all right. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to remind you again, the feedback and attendance link for both teachers and parents are already posted on the chat box. So with that, we have come to the end of our webinar. It's been an honor and privilege for me to be a moderator for today. Utmost appreciation to our panel of presenters, Madam Suva. Ms. Nitya and Mr. Hafiz, and of course, to all of uh, our wonderful audience who have taken the time to join us today. To all teachers, know that we appreciate you. Uh, to all the teachers who are struggling to reach out to the students, we appreciate you. Hence, we need the parents to work hand in hand with them. So let learning take place, even though there is a pandemic out there. Do not let the virus infect the development of our children. So we hope through this webinar, you are able to take away a lot of useful information, input and ideas for the benefit of our students. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, diharapkan agar sesi perkongsian ini telah memberikan banyak manfaat bukan sahaja kepada guru-guru, tetapi juga kepada ibu bapa yang menonton. Oleh itu, Kerjasama dan komunikasi yang baik antara guru dan ibu bapa adalah amat penting dalam memastikan PDPR dapat dilaksanakan dalam suasana yang seronok dan berkesan. So thank you everyone once again for joining us. For those who have missed any of our webinar, don't worry as you can find these webinars on the GPS YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like the channel. Till then, this is Fazila signing off. Stay healthy and stay well, everyone. Bye.